I'm gonna have to figure out how to, I guess, remove my address like the other monitor. But hey, this is me. These are my legs, obviously, you can't see me. Once again, you guys are cheating because you can read the title of the video or I can even slide the item in front of you. It's an Alienware 360 Hertz monitor. I finally got the two monitors that Shroud reviewed and um, you know, he said he sent this one back. Um, real quick, just I want to put a clarification here. I was one of the people that bought a 4K 88, 48 inch TV, you know, to use as my main monitor for Ampere. And I'm running this, you know, on a Kingpin, you know, 2160 megahertz score clocks, you know, plus 1400 on the memory, 520 watt power limit, you know, like I'm really, you know, pushing Ampere as much as it can go. And then somebody's gonna say, oh, but you didn't do a thousand watts. Like, okay, that's great, buddy. But um, listen, 1080p, you know, it does doesn't matter point that I'm trying to say is in my testing seen previously if, if my testing is incorrect you go get the cards yourself but in my limited test case scenario Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Fortnite and Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 4k my Red Devil 6800 XT cost $800 and it's beating my 3090. I feel like a chump. Honestly, uh, that might be my main card, you know, because I'm having a lot of fun at 360 hertz. But the point of this video, and, and if somebody says, where's the 6900 XT, that one's better. You're right. You see, the Power Color Limited Edition 6900 XT has three 8 pins. Mine only has two. Technically, on their website, they advertise it capable of having a 480 watt, you know, capable of handling that. Now, technically, we're going to get into the math, right? Now, you can do 150 watts off each 8 pin. Now, if somebody's going to say you can do more, blah, blah, I, I don't care. We're, we're talking about like safe, right? So, what is safe and recommended and given to the consumer? 150 watts per 8 pin. Then, you can pull 70 five watts from the PCIe slot. That is 525 watts, yet the Kingpin BIOS limits it to 520. All right, well, we really playing safe here, okay? 6900 XT, Power Color Limited Edition Red Devil, all right? That can technically pull 525 watts of power. I'm not asking it to pull 98 watts from the PCIe slot like on the Kingpin or anything. I'm not, I'm not asking for that. What, I, what I'm saying, right, as of today, January 21st, 2021, you are paying more money for that card and it doesn't have a higher power limit than reference. You are paying $500 more if we are including tariffs at this point because it launched for the non-limited edition 1170 and it's $1,200. After tariffs, they raised it $300. The Strix 3090 only hopped on $180 after tariffs. So $300, that's a huge F word hustle. That's a, that's a lot of money, okay? Um, let's let's not forget, AMD said we're going to continue selling reference at MSRP. So today there was an AMD drop. I was able to order a 6800 XT for $649.99. Not including tax. I don't know if AMD.com ships because I'm not like, you know, the, the god of like lightning hands and I was able to order it. I, I just didn't expect AMD to release the cards. I was just shocked. Pre-tariff price, whatever. The only way I would give up my Red Devil is for a 6900 XT reference because that is the price that they go for. For. They go for more. They, I think it's like twelve hundred dollars now. A sixty-eight hundred non-XT Red Devil limited edition non-XT. Remember, remember MSRP for reference is five seventy-nine ninety-nine. That is currently one thousand dollars after tax and shipping. Probably almost eleven hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. I cannot get a sixty-nine hundred XT for this testing, and my sixty-eight hundred XT, which I believe is the best bang for buck in value, beat my Kingpin. So if you are playing and you want the best GP, uh, GPU, GPU, we're not. Talking about CPU right now. Best GPU for 1080p in my testing and comparing with my cousin Strix 3090 OC side by side, not side by side, but you know, on a Discord call in the game, you know, in the same locations and everything. He has a 10850K, I have a 10900K. Okay, his is running at 5 gigahertz all core. He said it himself. I'm running at the MSI's, you know, 5 gigahertz. The bio said it. Remember, I showed Game Boost CPU and uh, RAM XMP profile. I have not tweaked the CPU and I have not tweaked the RAM yet and tightened it because once I do that, that that's something that, you know, most people can't do. You know, that's unreasonable to expect somebody to tighten their timings on their RAM. Most people don't know how to do that, okay? And for the CPU, if you don't know how to overclock, like, it's a lot of work. You know, if you really want to make it, you know, like, you want to perfect it, you know, ratatouille, you want it perfect, you can do it. Am I going to go out here sitting here? Yeah, this is what you do. Click this, do this. I've done that for a few of my friends. It takes a very long time. And if they have an instability or a crash or whatever, they always go, oh, well, I, I, I don't want to run a stress test. It's working in a game and then it's going to crash one 
one day. And then whose fault do you think it is? The guy who suggested overclocking. So I'm not doing that. <laughs> you, you can browse the subreddit and do whatever. But anyway, super duper duper long tangent. Most of the people who came here for this monitor probably don't give two F words. They don't give two S words. And the point is, here we are. This is the Alienware 360 Hertz 1080p monitor. It has the G-Sync module in it. It has HDR 400. Yeah, it's a uh, woohoo, right? But um, the HDMI port only allows 1080p 240Hz, and the display port allows 1080p 360Hz. Real quick, on the PG259QN that I have hooked up to my 6800XT right now, it can only do a free sync refresh range of 1 to 255Hz. My AW2721D, the one that you guys saw Shroud compare with this, and he said I can only keep one. I have no idea how in the world Shroud is sent two monitors by Alienware, and they tell him he can only keep one. He makes more, I'm not, forget it. Anyway, so the point is, this has, uh, I don't know what the free, free, free sync refresh range is. I have to check. The free sync refresh range on my AW2721D is 1 to 240 hertz. So we are going to check. It is the same thing. The main difference is this has the reflex latency analyzer. If you want to know the price I got it at, it was like 665. The other one cost me 760 after tax, okay? If I wanted the Asus one with the latency, reflex latency analyzer, it was 880 pre-tax. Okay, dude, after tax and shipping, that thing was like 960. That's a lot, okay? And I'm, and I'm not going to do this crap where all these influencers or YouTubers, whoever the hell gets sent their gear if you're buying a $800 or $1,000 GPU in 2020 or 2021 it's not for 1080p just because Ampere is dog shit and doesn't scale at 1080p doesn't mean shit the pros who play on these monitors only give a shit about 1080p because their architecture or whatever the hell it is doesn't scale at 1080p is not my problem if, if somebody wants to play something at 4k Ampere is still the better 4k card but if you want something for 1080p look I'm not gonna lie okay I have the cards and I paid with them for my money in the test results that I've seen if I have to choose a card I'm going to choose RDNA 2 for 1080p if they had HBM2 on an 80 compute unit RDNA 2 you know die all right let, let's say we had ADCUs we had HBM2 maybe that would scale maybe, maybe it would be better at 1440 and 4k it doesn't have it RDNA 2 never they look AMD said they're working on DLSS but let's just clarify they never included it in the RDNA 2 product stack, okay? So, you know, it, it, it could come as RDNA 3 as a feature, which is supposed to come by 2021. And that, that $800, quote me, $800,000 card will make a 3090 look like dog shit. They said they want the same jump from RDNA 1 to RDNA 2. People didn't believe it. Zen 3, they believed it. They, they, then they still didn't believe it. From Zen 2 to Zen 3, they were like, oh, RDNA 1, so, so, RDNA 2 still didn't be shit. You saw it? I, I don't care. Okay, you can believe whatever you want. All I'm going to say is after buying all the gear myself and trying it, I highly recommend you just buy the gear yourself and try it and then see what your experience is. Because look, I watch Gamers Nexus, I watch everybody and everything, and I thought I knew. I like Hardware and Box, I like Gamers Nexus, I like, I like, you know, like I, I watch LTT, I watch all of them. But the point is I'm trying to say is like nobody for, uh, for some reason has covered that you get more competitive FPS, 1080p low settings, and you hold the higher FPS. The lows on Ampere in a 1080p competitive shooter is worse on my 3090 running at 2.1 gigahertz and above and it's worse than my rdna2 cards 6800 xt let me clarify i have a red devil limited edition 6800 xt now i don't know because it's one out of a thousand it's it's a special bin die and it's so good okay i have no idea all i know is it pulls like 295 watts when i'm comparing it with my cousin strix 3090 oc max overclock you know like 2160 megahertz i'm holding 2750 2760 megahertz i'm pulling like half the powers in man in the same scenarios when i play a game of gunfight he's still dropping 280 whatever and like and, and even lower dude i am holding like 360 or 400 in those areas I've, I've, I've done i've ran my own loops in a private match at 1080p and hackney yard team deathmatch you go to private match the first default settings i literally stand in this one corner of the map like it's like the second floor or whatever and there's a window to the right and a window to the left and you can shoot inside the building or outside the building and when i look at that like dumpster and i'm like looking at the hallway at an angle the max i can get ampere to spike in that scenario is like 330 and it dropped quickly to 289 on my rdna 2 card which i just said i can hit 330 and then it 
bites the 400. I was worried, oh man, it's an $800 GPU. I don't know if I can stay in G-Sync refresh free sync range. Oh wait, no, no, it's actually the opposite. The, the, the card is so fast at pumping out frames that I'm actually getting more than the G-Sync free sync refresh range anyway. So I don't need G-Sync or free sync. I'm praying with my other 3090 that I can get enough FPS. So I just want to clarify, 1080p doesn't scale on amp here. Like, it's, it's shit tier, okay? At 1440p, the conversation changes. I've done the results at 1440p. It, it, it's, it's look, if you don't care about 1080p, then you, you shouldn't even be on this video. You shouldn't be looking at this monitor. Just wait for 1440p, 360 hertz, and be happy with your Ampere card, or, or just play a 4K. Don't, don't, stop buying CPUs. You don't even need to get a better CPU. 4, 4K, bar you barely need a better CPU, dude. But if you're here for this, shit matters, okay? And $800 GPU beating my cousins after I, I bought it and then he paid me because like, you know, I, I got God hands, right? So basically it was 2111. 16 let that sink in okay and then my card that i'm gassing up right now was 862 now i am comparing a pre-tariff with a post-tariff okay but it's insane to think that i would have sold that card off and just been like oh yeah amd drivers are shit rdna2 is shit and the 39 is the best card it doesn't matter it's the best card look if if you play games at 1080p and look i also was not a believer of a 24.5 inch monitor is better for competitive shooters than 27 inches I thought just shove it a little bit further back. It makes no difference. No, nah, man. The frame times are so fast at 1080p. Like the 360 hertz feels so smooth. People say they can't feel 240 hertz and 360 hertz. You're a boomer. You're, you're, you're just slow. Um, there is a difference and it feels great. It honestly feels great. The, the kids that are listening or watching the video who don't have jobs and they can't afford them, unfortunately, and they need like a Linus Tech Tips giveaway to get their products. I, I hope you win the giveaway because you could probably feel the difference. It's just unfortunate. You can't. I don't know. Maybe you can mow lawns. I don't know. This, this COVID. I have have no idea but the point is there is a difference like there, there doesn't have to be this stupid argument of well you know going from uh, 1 to a 60 hertz to 120 hertz is a 2x jump and then i linked this scientific study article saying that uh that's a difference that you can feel and you know th th the only way you will feel a difference from uh 240 hertz to 360 you, you need 480 hertz no no, you don't. The reason why I like this so much is because it's not a TN. The people who want to use strobing and TN 240Hz, BenQ, Zowie, whatever, Diac, go ahead, use it. I hate TN monitors. All right, look, I, I'm not, I don't care if I'm only using this for FPS. I can still load up a YouTube video on this. The Asus one comes with a sRGB calibrated profile in the box. I, I can pull out the thing. I don't remember if I showed it last time. This does not. I have a colorimeter, uh, display color monkey, whatever. And I'll use display cal. I'll calibrate it myself. That's not an issue. I'm not even going to calibrate my 1440p one. I play on it, whatever. And it's 98% DC IP3. That's pretty good coverage. All right. I'm going to leave it in that. I don't, I don't care. Okay. But for this, I will calibrate it to 100% sRGB. My little portable monitor, same thing. I know it's been a lot of information. I'm just trying to say what is the current situation and why I'm getting this and what I'm doing, summing it all up. Because look, I, I also will clarify, the OLED is fantastic. I'm not saying the OLED's garbage. I, I've just been using the 360s as my main. When I'm not playing FPS shooters, like I literally, like I will only play a shooter on the 360. It's fantastic. If it, like I said, if a game doesn't scale and then I'll just put it onto my 1440p monitor. But a 48CX, like there's a 42, C1 coming later this year. Okay, so that has the PPI of like 105 versus like 108 on a 27 inch 1440p monitor. We're, we're getting there, you know, and that's almost the same PPI as a 1440p 240. Uh, my bad, my bad. 1440p 27 inch monitor. We're getting there. There is a 32 inch LG 4K OLED 60 hertz professional monitor for like you know has all the color profiles and everything. We're getting there. Okay, we're getting there. All of LG's OLED panels are 120 hertz natively. That is a J OLED panel. J OLED said they're working on smaller monitors. If if we can get a 24 inch to a 32 inch 4K OLED, I, I'm really like asking for a lot here. I know, but DisplayPort 2.0 is coming out at the end of the year. RDNA 3 will be out by the end of the year. I have no idea what Jensen or whatever they're gonna do with uh, AM, uh, Nvidia. Is there gonna be this new Lovelace? Is there gonna be whatever? I have no idea. If it has DisplayPort 2.0, maybe there's a super refresh and they and they add it to that. But a super refresh is gonna look garbage and stupid when there's RDNA 3 and AMD has already said we want the same jump so 50 60 percent again yeah that's a joke it's gonna look it, it. 
So Nvidia has to release new cards. You know, by the time, look, this happened last time, dude. The only reason why I'm so pissy about this is because I spent months trying to get a Strix 1080 Ti. I remember that day at Thanksgiving, dude. It was 756 and I wanted it. And I was like, oh, I'll order it. You know, I'll order it. I didn't order it because I thought I could wait till Christmas and it'd be a Christmas present. You no, know, it was completely sold out. Ether mining with a 1080 was $10 a day. If I had a 1080 Ti, it would have been mining $20 a day. I, I would have made my card back in a, like a month and a half, dude. It was a joke. I, it's so stupid. And then I spent months and months and months trying to get one. MSRP was basically $1,500 on Amazon everywhere you couldn't get it. And that was it, dude. That was it. By the time the stock stabilized, th there was already rumors about the new series of cards. And then I ended up just getting a, what I believed was a good card at the time, a Strix 2080. You know, I was, I was happy. I won the 2080 Ti, but it was too expensive. And then I did the same mistake. Instead of buying it at launch for $1,249, I waited. I waited till Christmas. Every single time that card restocked, whatever, on Amazon, if if you have a way to check it on Camel, 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 or whatever, I checked it back when you could still pull those, like, price history logs. Maybe somebody can go out there, you know, with Wayback Machine, or whatever you want to check. Look, I'm not lying, so I don't care. So basically, it would raise in price, like, $100 each time, every time it restocked. Every month, it just basically, what, 1249 dollars $1,449, $1,449, then $1,549. So it was $1,550. I didn't know about all this. It was too expensive. I could not pay $1,550. I couldn't live with it. It was too much money. And I was like, for how much performance? It's like, like, you know, it's barely a jump. This time, you, uh, clearly, you know, I know what I'm doing, right? I got skin in the game. I know what the hell I'm saying now. But it was really disappointing. I just paid $800-ish, whatever. I couldn't buy a Strix 1080 Ti. I tried, and then people were like, don't buy a mining GPU. And then if you look at it, that card barely had a year left of warranty. I was like, oh, I might as well just buy a new one. If you look at the bang for buck, the value, I was better off getting just a Founders 2080 Ti day one. But I still had ATX build, and I cared about, like, you know, how it looked. You know, I cared about, I had an Asus motherboard. I wanted the RGB to sync up in my O11. Like, those were my priorities. I wouldn't have an ugly GPU. Maybe some people like the Founders Edition. Now I do. You know, it's different. I went ITX, like, a year later. You know, big, big shift. You know, I learned how to build, like, smaller PCs and all that. So it's a lot harder. I tried to do all the mods I could in the Ghost Dust 1. So here we are today. Wow, dude, that's a lot of information for people who probably don't care at all. For They're just here for the 1080p 360-year's monitor. Like I said, man, I, I, don't, I don't think I can and upload the videos and give a title and be like whatever it's more kind of just like an update you know i don't want to call it like a vlog you know but like you know it's it's it, it is an update so i will actually get started with opening this up and i probably summarize everything but the main thing if you do stay looking forward it's going to be me going to be me opening the box obviously checking out all the things it came with and i'm going to be comparing it side by side with the ace monitor and uh real quick this was 725 if you purchased the pre-tech if you purchased it around like Christmas time, whatever, a little bit before mid December, they did have it for like six sixty nine on Dell's website and they raised the price. It was like nine, like 889 or 900. It was a lot of money. I'm not paying that much. But like, I, that was my opinion. Like everybody else is like, why the hell would I pay $700 for a 1080p monitor? Yeah, if I had to recommend a monitor to the generic public, one monitor, the best value, that's really good. And if you want to like the best, the AW2721D was seven, I think 25. That monitor is $1,100. It was on sale for 725. It has a G-Sync, Ultimate, HDR 600, yeah, it's got like 32 zones, whatever, it's not perfect. It's $700, 725 pre-tax, and it was like, or 728, something like that. It comes with a three-year advanced exchange warranty. Alienware is owned by Dell. I don't care whatever you thought about Alienware in the past. I, I thought the same thing. They're owned by Dell, dude. They got your back. I've literally used the warranty. It's fantastic. They don't ask me for the monitor back first. They send me another monitor. I verify there's nothing wrong with it, and I can send this one back. They include a shipping label. It, it's fantastic customer service, dude. It's the only, like, monitor company I trust, like, after a Costco. Everybody else is going to make you ship out the monitor first, man. Like, do you really want to do that? If you have a single ultra-wide monitor, guess what? Oh, the, wow, Acer sends you a shipping label? Wow, dude, that's so cool. You can ship that monitor out? Wow. Do you have any other monitor? Oh, yeah, the 1080p 60 hertz 22-inch monitor that you had in the garbage? Or just, like, sitting in, like, the other dusty room? Like, that's unacceptable. Like, that's what you're paying for. Look, Akan, just want to shoot this out there. 
The con about Alienware is they usually pump out the monitors late. If you've looked at the Surface Pro series like by Microsoft, they'll usually release a Surface, but you'll notice like the processor's like a year behind. Even like the Surface uh, Duo, I think it was a phone, right? Notice how like the Snapdragon processor was like a year behind. They gotta spend like six months testing it or like a year and then they put it out and it's like, yeah, it came late. They were making sure there's nothing wrong with it. Like I know that there were some issues on the Surface Pro 4 like with some stuff. And I, I know the little issues that are always there, like the screen, whatever. I know, I know. Flickering or like touch input. Like I, I know I had a Surface Pro 3. Um, I don't know if I'll get a new one. Nobody's really moving around. I'm not in you know school. It was great to walk around on campus with it. But anyway, you can extend the warranty if you want to five years. Same thing. Advanced exchange, you know, like they care. It just says that on their box that they have, you know, whatever, one something pixel dot, whatever, and then they will do the advanced exchange. I haven't dealt with an Asus warranty. I'm just going to say what people have said on their internet and Reddit. Asus RMA is really bad. I haven't had to use Asus RMA, but the only time I did have to use it, um, I had the RMA my motherboard and it was an X99. And I didn't know if there was something wrong with my CPU or my motherboard. I called up Micro Center because they were the only like computer repair shop that probably have X99 motherboards. So I just needed another one to verify my CPU isn't dead or my motherboard wasn't dead. My PC was not booting. And they said, oh, that's super old, man. Uh, we, we don't have that. And I just assumed like, I was like, so what do you think my thing's out of warranty? She was like, yeah. <laughs> a week later, I, I gave up and somebody was like, you might as well check and like try to file a warranty and whatever. I checked and my warranty expired that day. And I was like, oh, dude, this is perfect. I I'll just file the RMA today. And then I was trying to file the RMA that day. I think it was September 11th. And then September 12th was the next day. But when I tried to file the warranty, for some reason it was only lettering me registered as the next day because it was like 8.59 p.m. or something. And I couldn't do anything. It wouldn't let me register the warranty. And it just said out of warranty. And I was like, dude, it's the same day. It says warranty expires September 11th. I, I believe this was 20, 20, 20 was last year. 2020 is this year, 2021, 2019. Yeah, yeah, it was like September 11th. 11th, 2019 yeah 2019 and i mean that was pretty much it i mean you can go on reddit and look up you know whatever the experience is personal story i know a guy who did an rma for a strix 2080 ti he sent it in and then aces hit him with the there's some dirt and debris in the in the gpu and um he opened it to repaste it that was it but dirt and debris and they said the repair for it and by the way this was like a month and a half ago this isn't like you know seven decades ago they, they charged him like i think 1200 or it was like some ridiculous repair it was like 1134 or like 1234 i can probably find the pictures later but it was like twelve hundred dollars and he didn't know what to do he was panicking somebody said contact gamers nexus man he literally emailed steve from gamers nexus you know the main guy long hair tech g Jesus. Tech Jesus looked at it and said, oh, it's all good, bro. He emailed the people he knew at Asus. He forwarded it and CC'd them. Oh, yeah. They said, oh, it's, it's just it's just a glitch. We, we messed up. And uh, they RMA'd it for free, dude. And they, and they gave him uh, a discount. <laughs> we're we're going to remove a $1,200 of a charge for that RMA. You ship them out another card, man, it works. So, yeah, uh, shout out to Gamers Nexus for that because that was really good. Otherwise, you know, if you're a nobody, you don't have a YouTube channel, you don't have a, I guess, social media clout is the word. I guess they just don't care. So yeah, that kind of sucks. But luckily, um, Gamers Nexus was able to take care of that for him. So I was really glad that he didn't get screwed over. Uh, he was just having like clock issues with his uh, GPU. But yeah, anyway. <sighs> wow, dude, we're like 29 minutes into this, man. I, I haven't even opened up the monitor. I've just been talking. Yeah, I'll put a timestamp and then you could just jump ahead if you don't care. I don't know what to say. But if you do care, thanks. It's cool. But yeah, I am going to open this up now. But yeah, the reason why I brought that up is because Aces does have their own warranties. It does say that they do the advanced exchange, but like I was saying, they... Some people said when you call up, they'll, they'll be like, oh yeah, it's not in stock. You have to ship in yours first and they'll give them a label. And when, when Dell did that to me... Look, I trust Dell, so it's different. But like, when they did that to me, man... Instead of sending me like a refurbished one or whatever, they made me wait like two weeks. I I'm going to be honest, okay? But they shipped me out a new one from Best Buy, okay? So I got a new one from Best Buy. I went from an A001 or an A00 to an A09 Dell S2716 DGR panel. And then I eventually ended up selling it to a friend for like 150 because I have no use for it. I told you guys, I hate TN. That was my attempt of trying a TN again. And see, that's customer service. I didn't pay extra for 
software. It's included with the monitor. So why in the world would I buy something else? And, I, and I'm moving. I've been saying this for like God knows how long. I, I'm I'm really not a big fan of you know trying to get these other monitors that say oh you know ship in your monitor first, buddy, and then we'll ship you out another one after we get it back and verify there's nothing wrong with it. You realize everybody does that also for GPUs besides EVGA. EVGA is the only one who will offer you a cross ship RMA or an advanced RMA, or advanced exchange RMA on your GPUs. If you are the first buyer, so if you buy it from Amazon.com or you're the first person to buy it and register it, then yes. If you're a secondhand owner, you do not get that benefit. But they are the only GPU AIB manufacturer on NVIDIA. This is my first AMD card. So so, so if somebody else, you know, knows if PowerColor does this or somebody else, the comments say it because I don't know. I have to do research. But anyway, point is, shout out. Th- th- that's really nice EVGA. They also have 24-7 customer service, customer support. So like tech support, technical support, I should say. Not customer service, technical support. So you can call them up, speak to an American. And then if you have an issue, they can help you. I obviously don't need that help. But if I had to recommend a GPU to a friend, that's really helpful. The only problem with EVGA cards is they look ugly. They're ugly. Like actually ugly. So you're really buying it for the warranty and hoping that it performs. Real quick, FTW3 Ultra 3090. Dog shit, don't buy it. The voltage controller doesn't work. It's a placebo slider. The Kingpin, fantastic card. Ampere's dog shit. So I have no faith in that having any resale value by the time our DNA 3 is out or Lovelace. Because I didn't buy NVIDIA's version of Vega. I would actually... It's stupid. This, oh, man, dude. Like, people don't like the Moore's Law is dead guy and all that. Whatever, fine. And then there's, like, those channels with, like... Look, you know the YouTube channels where people get up there and they're, like, hype men. They're always saying, ah, AMD, ah, the CPU, ah. Like, dude, I'm not even doing that. Like, I literally showed the numbers. Maybe you couldn't see it when I'm, I'm like, running around the map doing my own little test. But, like, yeah, I got more FPS, a 1080p with a 6800 XT. Like, there's no way on this earth... I'd be selling my card if it was like, if it was worse. Like, no, I'm genuinely disappointed. But on the bright side, I am genuinely happy with the value that I paid. You know, if I got a reference 6800 XT and I sold my 2080 for like 550, let's say, right? I think I did sell it for like 550, whatever, eBay, whatever fees, whatever, right? And then um, if I got a reference 6800 XT, man, dude, imagine I only paid a hundred dollars more, got double the VRAM and that thing, max overclock is like still being my 90 and 1080p now i know that's a reference card i think they only do like 2.6 gigahertz on air my red devil might be binned you know that's why it's doing 2750 i have no idea there's not a higher power limit bios i i don't know right if a 6900 xt red devil limited edition can do like 480 watts or if amd makes you know an 80 compute unit hbm2 you know that increases the memory bandwidth you know and then that helps at 4k that'd be great the dream card was 80 cu hbm i would have paid 1200 i think everybody would have and raster monster didn't happen but it is what it is bros and rdna3 will probably be out by the end of the year i understand it's january but i like to think ahead i like to plan ahead yeah i'm gonna open this up man i, I should have been talking while opening this up one second let me, let me get a blade so cut this open ching ching i just spend all that time talking I, I might be able to just uh dub over it and then just play open this i have no idea how i'll do it i might just leave it with just me standing and talking but yeah this part is opened and then at the bottom you have to do the same thing this monitor is black the aw2721d is white throw that over there and we're going to cut this open and then there's over here one more tape cut that and just tape on this end i don't know if i have to open every end but we are hey hey don't don't look at my serial number don't look at my address you don't, you don't gotta know where i live and uh yeah, that's pretty much it so let's uh let's open this up shall we just reading the information on this i mean it, it shipped from pennsylvania so they had it at my fedex for like i don't know honestly a while oh oh okay, okay. It, it comes off it's your eyebrow. Yep. the stand i'm actually gonna oh, man. Uh, 
I'm not gonna be using with the stand. If I open it up, hook it up with the stand, I can't compare them side by side, but like, I am gonna mount it on an arm, but most of you guys probably won't mount it on an arm. You're probably gonna wanna see a stand side by side. I'll do it, bro, I'll do it. It's not, it's not that hard. I'm making a bigger deal than it is. But I will, after this, go get my Ergotron LX Amazon Basics arm, and then I will mount this. It's just a lot easier to mount it on an arm, but it's fine. Oh, oh this is nice, dude, it's nice. Oh, that's cool. The other one said G-Sync on the left. This one says G-Sync on the right. So that's how it's supposed to be done. 1080p on the 360 hertz on the right, this on the left. All right, I'm gonna put this on the desk. Give me two seconds. The Asus one has the G-Sync sticker on the left. All right, I'm gonna box this up. Take out the stand. Okay, slide that up. Slide this in here. Oh, my bad. That goes here. That's what you want. I don't care. And this will be attached onto the stand like this. Connect, and then you screw in the bottom. I hope this is all visible, otherwise I should just be using the wide angle lens because then everything shows up, but yeah. Okay, that's in tight. All right, we're good. And then I just take this. I think it's the same way. You scoop it up. Let me just go through this. Uh, this is just the plastic back plate for the back. I am going to be using this, obviously. A lot of people want the 360Hz monitor, they're like sold out apparently. I had to wait a long time to get the Asus one. I think I ordered it, I had to wait like a month. What is this? Liquid? I don't know. And then inside should be... So Dell includes a power cord, right? Dell includes the display port cable. Dell includes a USB cable to use your monitor as a USB hub and control the lighting. And then they include a mini USB, my bad, mini display port to display port cable. So I'm going to take out the USB and I'm going to take out the power cable and the display port cable. You guys already know, PC in the closet, I don't need this. Doesn't mean I'm giving it to you, I just mean that uh, you know, whoever I sell it to eventually, which I obviously will do, you know, because I'll upgrade in like a year or two or whatever. I'm probably not going to upgrade it to a TN 480 hertz. I really hate TN, man. I can't use that monitor for anything but playing games and it's so disgusting to look at, so I'm not getting it. I still don't know how to do color grading and all that, so I just leave the colors the same. I just kind of like got good with putting my voice together with some audio and then maybe throw some clips around and uh, that's pretty much it, but it does take time, it does take time. All I know is it would be very convenient if you own your own business and you just meal prep or you have a meal prep service. If I could ever get sponsored for a meal prep service, that would be like the most amazing thing ever. You'd probably have to be like a competitive bodybuilder or you'd have to be like, you'd have to promise like, you probably have to sign up and be like, I promise to put on like 20 pounds of muscle in a year or like in, in, in like six months with this service. And then that's, uh, that's how you prove like the service is so good. And then the service would always like use that as a reference. This guy went from this to this and it was all because of our meal prep service. Nobody loved him, but you know, we took care of him. We fed him when he needed the food. Now he's big and strong. All right, so take this out. It's pretty light, so you know, it's not that big a deal. I am going to be, actually I should take this off. I don't need this little sticker. I can't see from your end. I think there's probably like tape all over the front. I'm trying to peel this off gently, gently. And then this should be it, the monitor. It's nice from the back, dude. It's got like this nice matte black. The front is like, you know, it's a monitor. Honestly, dude, yeah, throw this in there. Let me put this on my desk. Two seconds. I hope my power cable is long enough. I don't remember if I got a custom one that was longer or if I have an extension. I really don't remember. There is a sticker that says 360 hertz on it. It's holographic like a Yu-Gi-Oh card. I do want to rip it off, but I don't know if I can. Anyway, so I am going to put this Dell monitor to 360 hertz in front of my 240 hertz. And then I am going to put the Asus one on the right side. And we will have them side by side for this comparison. And you know what? It doesn't matter. I'll box it. I did it upside down. I put the box, put it inside the wrong way, upside down. I forgot. Like this goes like this. You go down, this goes like this. The handle goes like this. And that's how you pack it. Not that you care. Pack and unpack tutorial. I am missing one of the plastic pieces. That is not good. I will find it. It has to be in the room. I think about where else could it be. So I disconnected the monitor. Oh, one second. Okay, we're good. We're back. Yeah, I have a USB C cable to display port. So I was able to hook that up. The monitor is hooked up. It should turn on. It's not turning on. But the display port, power cable, and all. Power cable is not connected. All right, there's 
just the Alienware monitor that's turning on. So the only two monitors connected to my computer right now are my 360 hertz, my other 360 hertz, and my OLED TV. I might just disconnect the OLED TV as well, just to make this easier. I might leave it up there just so if I want to put hardware info stuff up there and have these two duplicate each other. Yeah, yeah, so I'll do that. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this over and then try to get these side by side with each other. Well, my Velcro sticky pads have worn out now. Let's see, I cannot move that monitor anymore back. Oh wow, the Asus one doesn't go higher and the Alienware doesn't go higher. Okay, I'm glad I put the stand on because now you can see the Alienware is the more ergonomic of these monitors. Now let's just move this over and back a little bit more. Now this is contacting my portable monitor now and I am not too thrilled with that, but hey, let's put the stand like this straight, put this a little bit. Now put this straight, same thing, uh, stand like this, and I think that's as straight as I'm going to get it. I'm going to lower this one now, I'm going to try to get these equal. Alright, so this one has a thick boy bezel, it's low, I'm trying to get this exact, you know, I'm trying to have these side by side. Alright, well, we'll keep the Asus the highest height, and then I'm going to just try to get the Alienware a little bit higher. Bezel wise, to be honest with you, I, I thought the Alienware would be much worse, but they are actually are about the same. And yeah, it's just the Alienware once tilted down a little bit. I think that is as close as I am going to get the perfect bro. Okay, let me turn off my air purifier, that's probably making a lot of noise. Okay, now my lighting, I don't even know if that's helping, but hey. Alright, look, this is uh, visible. Let's check out how this looks. You know what? It's okay, man. <laughs> it's okay, I guess. It is what it is. I am going to set both of these to... I'm probably just going to have to cut this part of the video out. It's fine, whatever. Dude, th by the way, this is January 21st, 2021. I just finished editing the Silver Form DT1 version 1.1 RTX 3090 Founders Edition build. I recorded this on October 26th, dude. I just finished editing it. I gotta like sit down and dump all the videos, man. Really do. This is three months behind, dude. Today is January 21st, so. It's just the case ones are long, and then like some people complained that it was just like, you know, you just dumped it on the internet, and like you didn't edit it, and it's like, dude, it's a lot easier to just dump it up there, but hey. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get better, get faster. You know, you live, you learn, you grow, you persevere. So yeah, I'm gonna load up with Radeon software if it loads. I'm gonna load display settings and my 4K my TVs over there. One, two, so we gotta reverse this order. Hit apply, I'm gonna minus resolve. We're gonna put the volume out of my speakers on my TV, I guess, because none of these have speakers. So we're gonna do that. Let's go to advanced. We can do 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. There's no audio because my TV is off. Genius, gotta drink water, man, I gotta stay high. Hydrated. Guys, want to see my mug? Got this as a gift. It's pretty cool, right? The other side says the same exact thing. It's nothing, nothing special. Okay. Okay. Now let's try. Hear that? Those are my bookshelf speakers. Okay. Audio is looking good. Advanced. Close that up. Display. And now I want to verify that they're both 360 hertz. The Dell and my LG TV, 60 hertz. Come on, man. And my ROG monitor, 360 hertz. The Dell gives me more than one option. For With the Asus, it only lets me do 360. That's weird. Okay, whatever. I don't really care. This is in the sRGB profile. As you can see, scenery, racing mode, cinema. RTS, G-Sync, Esports, sRGB. The sRGB is the calibrated mode. The Alienware, yeah. Bro, 360 hertz is so smooth. It's so nice. It's so fun, bro. It, it's so so nice, man. I'm going to close Afterburner. There was an AMD driver update. My AMD software is not loading. That does suck. It would be nice if it, like, launched, you know, like it's supposed to. It's all good, you know. Is it really not going to launch, dude? Bro. <laughs> Whatever. I guess I'll just download the drivers myself. Yeah, let's check this out. It's gonna be a little bit hard, but knob is on the back over here. Is this visible right now? It's barely visible, but here, let me shove this closer. Is that visible? So let's back this up. So let's see if it's raised in height. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's fine. So focus is the Alienware monitor. Standard mode, G-Sync Esports. Changing this will increase the power. Yeah, go ahead. FPS, MOBA, RPG. Game 1, then I have basically all the options, Game 2, 
3 comfort view. This is the blue light filter mode, warm, cool, and then custom color is going to be the sRGB profile that I set myself. But we're going to set it to standard now. Game enhance mode, timer, frame rate, so it shows me the frame rate and my, uh, you know, display alignment. We could set it, you know, make sure that they're both aligned. Response time fast, super fast is stream. I'm not sure which is the best uh, without any chrono artifacting. Dark stabilizer, three settings, variable backlight, mode zero, mode one, mode two. Oh, well, that's, there's no modes on that one. There is modes on my other Alienware one, so that is 75% and 75% contrast and brightness. This has two HDMI ports. I don't know if this one has two HDMI ports. I don't think it does. It's just HDMI and display port, so it is kind of crazy. The power button is blue. I want that off. I guess you can set it to spectrum lighting, which is just all the lights and the stand lights go on. Let me see if I can turn this off. I think the RGB you see right now on the back is from my Asus one. Okay, it's off. Let me just look at the back. So the stand is light up, doing like this cool like Philips Hue lunar light thing. Yeah, but it's not a lot. Oh, that is a lot of Discord pinging. We're gonna just, um, we're gonna have to, oof. Oof, we, we got a lot of pinging. That is an onslaught of pinging. I mean, I did launch Discord, man. Okay, there, it's on my other monitor. My friend sent some memes. Okay, yeah, that was a funny meme. The Alienware looks like it has more bleed, but that's also because it's running the 75% brightness. So now we're gonna set my... So the Asus one has this, uh... Oh, well, you can't see the Asus right now. And I can't move the chair. Moving this back now. Are both visible right now? Hopefully. So in Game Plus, you have cross chair. So I can put different cross chairs in the middle. Timer, it's got the timer. I can do FPS counter, stopwatch, FPS counter, real time. I can move it, dude, that's got way more gaming features than that one. And then you got display alignment, FPS counter, dynamic graph. Yeah, that's really nice. Dark boost, same thing, three levels. Overdrive is on normal, off and extreme. Okay, so maybe I might variable. So I put on scenery now. I think that's the normal mode. So let's check what the brightness is now. 70, contrast is 50. I don't know why Dell does this weird thing where they make their contrast default 75%. It's so weird. Like that's the correct. I don't I don't know why they do that. It's weird. Like every other TV and everything you buy, it's usually always 50. Brightness set to 70%. Color, it gives you color temp. It's got all these color options. It's kind of crazy. Six asset, saturation, DP, SDR, YCB, CRS, RGB, gamma on, and then for HDMI. Yeah, you got a lot of options on that one. The, the Asus one is good. It's just that uh, you got a better warranty on this, but if people don't care about the warranty because, you know, you buy it from Micro Center or something, then obviously you want the better, oh, G-Sync processor, NVIDIA, Reflex, Latency, Analyzer, and then you can hook this up and turn this on. And it says, once this feature is on, connect it to a USB port, and it's compatible with wired slash wireless mice. Oh, wow. Hit proceed. Ensure my mouse is plugged into the USB port. Okay, well, it's not. I obviously can't measure my latency. I have an AMD GPU hooked up, so wow. Dude, I'm going to have to hook up a 3090. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't do the testing in this video. I just realized that because I have a AMD card hooked up. Wow. Okay, that was a fail. That was a hard fail. I'll, I'll hook it up later. I, I really just want to make sure everything's working on this one. Firmware service tag, ambient light sensor. Okay. Yeah, that'd be nice if both of these Alienware monitors have the light sensor in it. I have the ambient light sensor on the Asus one as well, but it doesn't work. It doesn't do it. I think both the Alienware ones do it properly. So that's really nice. Finally, my monitors know when the lights are off, you know, just dim it. I don't need to die. It's pretty nice. Preset modes, color brightness. Preset modes, where's the brightness? What does this button do? This is the top button. This is the middle button, the profiles. This is what, brightness, okay, okay. And what's the last one? This is power, right? Oh no, it's dark stabilizer. The power is all the way at the bottom. Oh, okay, that makes it a lot easier. It's confusing on the Asus because it doesn't, the last button is the power button, so it, it like tricks you. This is the power button at the bottom, and I'm never gonna click that. Okay, so this is at 70% brightness right now, but the Alienware is, look, I'm gonna play some games on it, all right? Test it out. I'd like to take this moment to thank my 360 hertz monitor. Shout out. Jojo gang.